What's going on guys? So uh, today I did some more bank hopping and I want to make a video talking about how you can do coin hunting for free. Now it's very important to understand that what I mean by free is using borrowed money. All right, so as of right now, uh, today going to a couple different banks, uh, one bank happened to have $800 in halves and uh, what happened was I, I asked, hey, do you got halves? And usually what will happen is the, uh, the people behind the counter will say like, oh, I got $2 or oh, no, I don't have any. You have to ask about the vault because that's exactly what happened here. And I, I've experienced that before, too, is like, hey, do you have any half dollars? And they go, oh, yeah, I got six. And then I say, well, do you have any in the vault? And then they'll go, all right, well, let me check. And then sometimes they do. Sometimes they have hundreds of dollars of them in the vault. They just don't know that. Uh, maybe they don't personally have access to the vault. They have to ask the manager. The manager might know. Uh, so it's always good to ask that specifically. You know, hey, do you have any in the vault? I'm looking for rolls. Because um, sometimes they just assume you just mean a couple, you know, to give to your kids to be fun. So, yeah, that was kind of a, a huge score. Even if there's nothing in here, it's just fun. It's fun to look at this stuff. That's why I enjoy coin hunting. Uh, also, when you're at the bank, totally an aside, but ask for bank bags. This is a bank bag that someone gave me. Uh, they're free. They get them literally for customers. This is a more common style bank bag. All right, so if you have change or something, you know, it's just a zippered, you know, pouch. Uh, the other side would usually have the bank name on it, which this one does, of course, but I'm not showing it. Um, but yeah, so here's some loose half dollars and dollar coins that I got from one particular bank. Um, another bank, this one is completely filled with uh, rolls. Of, uh, of dollar coins, okay? I actually went back, I, I started looking through dollar coins and stuff. There are plenty of dollar coins that uh, actually have some value, okay? Uh, a real easy one to look for is there's a couple different uh, years and presidents, specifically presidents, but uh, you know, if you're looking at presidential dollars that are missing marks around the rim, those are worth a little bit of money. Uh, obviously, any Susan B. Anthony's, that, like the wide rims, I've talked about that before. So I look through dollar coins as well now, but it's gonna be harder to find something like that uh, that has value. But yeah, I got about $1,000 worth of coins today, even though I'm broke. So how does that work? How are you broke, but you bought $1,000 worth of coins? Well, I'm borrowing money. That $1,000 is not for coins, it's not for fun, that's for bills. However, I don't owe those bills for another four weeks. So what I'm doing is I'm borrowing this money for now to put it back. Now, <laughs> there's a huge catch here. If you don't have any willpower or you don't have like a good schedule or if you're lazy or you're forgetful, this stuff will absolutely not work. And 100% do not recommend playing with your actual bill money unless you have plenty of time and plenty of um, priority on replacing it. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna look through this today. Tomorrow, I'm gonna put it all back in the bank. Now here's the big catch. How do you put this back in the bank? Because first of all, I'm not gonna re-roll all this stuff. It's gonna be such a pain. Um, what I do is I open accounts at different banks that have uh, change machines that are free for their customers. Okay, so there's three different banks that I belong to that have change machines that I can go in, and I, of course it's very important to make sure that their change machines accept half dollars. I don't know any that accept the dollar coins. The dollar coins I kind of just keep, that's for savings. Um, but in this particular case, I'm, I'm in the middle of selling something, so that's kind of a wash. But just in general, if you can join a bank and, and also make sure there's no fees, make sure there's no minimums to have money in the account, you have to look at all these details there. But if you can join a bank where you can basically use their version of a Coinstar machine with no fee, then you could do this forever. You can take coins from wherever, go to that bank, put them back into the machine, bring the ticket back up to the, uh, the teller or universal banker, and, uh, and get cash back. So like I said, spent about $1,000 today, but tomorrow I'm going to get hopefully less than $1,000 because I'm going to keep some coins. But if there's nothing fun here, it's all going to go back. So that's how I get to coin hunt for free. Uh, I got to use the air quotes there because the bank's not going to give you a bunch of money if you don't have any. You need the money there available, but you don't have to actually spend it. The only money you're really spending is whatever coins you take out. So let's say I go through all of these half dollars and four of them are ones I want to keep, whether it has silver or a certain date or whatever the case may be, I'm actually buying $2 worth of coins, even though I've spent 1000 to look through it. So I, I really want to stress how important it is not to play with money you don't have. Ideally, you would just have money on the side that you don't need for bills. And I usually do. I usually have about $200 that I play with for coin hunting. It's just in one particular account. 
Uh, I take it out when I want to go coin hunting. And then, of course, like I said, I go back to these different banks um, and, you know, use their coin machines and put it back into the account. It's that simple. It's just money to play with. So if you happen to have a little extra savings, it's a really fun thing to do. It doesn't have to cost you a penny. It can be completely free, except, of course, it does cost your time. It does cost gas to physically go to these banks to pick up these coins. Uh, but, you know, that's the, the price of admission, I suppose. So nothing in this world is actually free. I'll throw some air quotes again, uh, because in order to do things, you generally have to spend other money. If nothing else, just getting in your car and driving these days costs quite a bit of money. Um, so something to consider there as well. But like I said, if you're kind of bored, uh, so many people watch these coin hunting videos and they get excited about it. They're like, wow, you know, I never really thought about these coins and I kind of want to look through them. And it's a great time killer. If you happen to be uh, retired, if you happen to have uh, a disability, you can't work. If you're just sitting home all day trying to find things to do and you're just bored of a binge watching Netflix series, go coin hunting. It's fun. You can make a couple bucks on the side. It's not so much about making money on the side uh, and profiting as much as it is just having fun. It's a good time killer, but it's just really exciting. I still find it very exciting, even though I've been doing this for years. Occasionally, I'll go to the bank and they'll have one roll. I'm like, okay, cool. I can look through one roll. And, and sometimes you hit kind of a jackpot and they have a bunch to look through. Obviously, volume helps. If you have a lot of coins, if I got to look through $10,000 worth of half dollars, I'd probably find more things I'm looking for than if I look through one roll. That's just simple math, right? So the more the merrier, but like I said, this is not money I'm spending. This is money I need for bills that's gonna go back in the bank tomorrow. So something else you have to think about. When's the bank gonna be open? Can I get there? How's my schedule look? You, you can't play with money like this unless you know a thousand percent and you have a backup to a backup to a backup that the money's gonna be back in the account way before you actually need it for anything. But in the meantime, why not play the lottery? You never know what you're gonna find, you know? So that's, it's fun. I don't usually borrow money in this case. I was literally going to look to get maybe $200 worth, but when she said she had 800 bucks and then the uh, other bank had, um, you know, the dollar coins, I'm like, all right, cool. I'll just borrow it for a day. That's it. Borrow my own money for a day and pay myself back tomorrow. So anyway, that's it. Word of warning. Don't play with my, I can't say this enough. Don't play with money you don't have to play with. Ideally, this would be just your extra savings, but either way, it will be completely free to look. Anything you want to keep will cost you just the face value of those coins. If you keep a quarter, it costs you 25 cents. If you're looking through dimes and you keep five dimes, it costs you 50 cents and so forth. So it's just a fun way um, you know, to get into this hobby. You don't have to actually spend any money. I've probably looked through since the beginning of me coin hunting, I could say easily $30,000. I don't have $30,000 to look through coins at one point, but I've done it over the course of years. $100 here, $200 there, $50 here, $1,000 there. Oh, I'm getting excited knocking my camera around here. <laughs> but uh, you guys get the point, right? It doesn't actually have to cost you money. It does cost you a lot of time. If you have a busy schedule, it's not the best thing. I actually have to go out of my way to make time for this kind of stuff because I always have things going on. Uh, but I put a priority on it because it's so much fun. And it's a way for me to continue to stack silver without spending money on it. Right now, silver prices are very low. I love to be buying right now. It just happens to be a dry spot where I don't have money. I'm pretty broke, you know, for a while. So in order for me to keep obtaining more silver, how do you do it without any money? Well, you do this. This is just a fun little way to do it. And I have been lucky, knock on wood. Get a little wood off to the side here. Um, yeah, I've been lucky finding things, but I can look through all this stuff and find nothing. In fact, at the end of this video, I'll let you know exactly what I found that was worth money. It could be nothing at all. It could be, wow, $800 worth of 90% halves would have been pretty nice. But you know, I'll, give you a, I'll give you one or two here on camera. All right. So these have some different wrappers. So you open up both ends, push them through. I'm just looking pretty much at the rims. Just this first roll. I don't see any in this roll. Although there's a nice little bicentennial. Two bicentennials, three bicentennials, four bicentennials. Are these all bicentennials? It looks like a whole roll of bicentennials. Yeah. How about that? 1776 to 1976. Pretty cool. Uh, something to look for. <laughs> the San Francisco Mint bicentennials are silver. I believe it's 40% silver, so I have to save all the bicentennials and look through there and make sure. So these will be set off to the side, but. All right, guys, so I looked through all of that coinage over the course of two days uh, in little chunks here and there. 
And uh, actually, um, the half dollars were a lot easier to look through than I thought. And unfortunately, that's the bad news. Uh, the reason the bank had $800 worth of them is because another uh, coin hunter slash stacker slash collector had dropped them off. So what happened was I started ripping through those rolls and I noticed that the uh, the wrappers were marked and uh, whoever previously had them uh, sorted them completely. So like I grabbed one roll and it said 74p and I open it up and it is completely filled with 1974 Philadelphia Mint uh, half dollars, right? <laughs> so then I open another one and it says 71d and guess what the whole roll is 1971 Denver uh, half dollars so you know and then they had probably seven or eight different rolls with uh, bicentennials they were marked uh, BIC and so it kind of took the steam out of it because that you know one roll after another when I read it and then open it it's exactly where it is then it you know it's not really as fun but I can zip through it a lot faster you know because I can take the whole stack and just kind of and you know go through it so the upside i guess is that it didn't take me hours and hours uh but the downside is that uh there was no chance of finding anything because it was previously picked through it's like going to a restaurant and getting takeout and getting home and then you open the lid and it's just like a, a chicken bone <laughs> you know so yeah it's it's pretty disappointing but that's that's uh that's the game that's what you deal with uh sometimes you have virgin rolls where like literally someone just you know, took it from home, took it from an old shoebox or a little coin bank or or a change jug or something like that. And then other times you have that. You have uh, a previous stackers. Like, for example, when I go to the bank and I load all those up into the machine, I know there's nothing special in there. Uh, it's going to go into a giant bag. That bag is going to go to some sorting facility where it's going to get re-rolled. And then eventually some other stacker or some other coin hunter is probably going to get those same rolls. So... There's a lot of recycling going on, uh, but I thought it was interesting that, that it was literally completely picked through and sorted. Someone took the time to sort all those very nicely. Um, but I did find um, something interesting. The stuff on the left here, I actually just have a story of. The only thing of value in all those coins is this, and this is a Susan B. Anthony wide rim. All right, so I touched upon this in previous videos, but if you look at the date, 1979, the one is very close to the rim. This is called literally a wide rim or a close rim, Susan B. Anthony. And these do have value. On a, a bad day, you're looking at maybe five bucks. Uh, on a good day, 15 bucks. Just kind of depends on the condition, depends on who's looking at it and who's interested in buying it. But it is worth at least five times its face value. It is a dollar coin. It's worth at least five bucks to coin collectors. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I always uh, enjoy finding those. They're not as hard to find. I probably have like five or six already that I found coin hunting in the last probably two years. Um, so yeah, uh, unfortunately, there was nothing special. There was probably 40 or 50 Sacagaweas, um, a couple hundred of the presidential dollars. Um, and, uh, and like I said, all the half dollars were, of course... Um, already picked through so there's nothing really special except for these these are special although they don't have any value there is a cool story behind these these are painted half dollars now normally you see these uh, more often with quarters all right so you're picking through and you'll see a coin that it was painted at some point now this one has green paint on one side of it all right you can see the paint is wearing off all right this is a 1996 all right, half dollar. You notice this one here has same thing, green. It's a different color green, but it's wearing off. This is a 1974. And then here's one with very little uh, left. This is a 1971. So the question is, why would people paint these coins? Well, it's actually an easy explanation. It is to mark them so they're easily identifiable. And what, what people used to do is you'd go to a bar, and back in the day when they had jukeboxes and stuff that took half dollars. Uh, the, the workers of the bar, the barmaids, they'd have maybe a stack of $10 worth of coins. And let's say when, you know, none of the patrons were playing any music in the jukebox, they want to get it lively, get it going. They take one of their painted coins, they'd go over, pop it in the jukebox, play a song. And they'd use that as filler throughout the night. All right. So when people weren't using their own money, you know, in the jukebox uh, to play songs, and it was just kind of quiet, they'd go over and they'd pop one in. So the idea is when they empty the machine, 
all right they can quickly identify all of the house coins okay so they could take them back out put them back in a stack and have them for the next night now these were also used as markers for um you know like billiards games you know especially quarters uh, i personally never saw a billiards table that took half dollars but obviously at some point they did um, but again, that's why you see a lot of quarters that are marked as well. So people would, let's say you're playing a game and let's say the machine takes your money and you're like a regular, you know, bar fly or whatever at a certain place. Oh man, you know, I took my quarter. So they empty the machine or they open it up and you can just grab your quarter. You say, Hey, I lost a red quarter. Boom. There it is. So they basically use them to mark the coins and you'll see all kinds of colors. Uh, red is pretty common. Green is pretty common and blue is pretty common. Uh, but I've seen yellow and orange. I'm sure there's all kinds of different colors out there. I mean, any any color that exists, I'm sure you can paint a coin. But uh, but yeah, that's the story behind it. So they don't have any like actual value. Uh, and the reason they don't have value is the obvious reason that anyone can paint coins. If people are paying 10 or 15 bucks for these things and, you know, you line them up and take a, a can of spray paint out and spray them down and rough them up a little bit, make them look old. And, and there you go. They'd be counterfeited very easily. So they don't have any actual value to collectors except for a cool story. And I think it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, so I actually save these because I just think they're kind of fun. And like I said, it makes a, a cool story, but they don't actually have any value. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier in this video, you know, the more you get, the better chance you have of getting something just because of the mathematics of volume. But you never know. I've gotten one roll from a bank and in that one roll, you know, there was mostly 40% silver. That's happened before. I've gotten loose coins where they gave it. Look at the last time I did a, a, a coin uh, hunt. The half dollars I got were extreme, because I got mostly quarters, extremely limited. I only had like whatever it was, maybe eight or 12 or whatever it happens. I don't remember offhand. But uh, most of those, the majority of them were silver. That was awesome. In this case, I got $800 worth of them. There was 1,600 chances of looking at a piece of silver and goose egg. So uh, it really is random. You just don't know, you know, if you're gonna find something or not, but you know, the hunt is obviously what it's all about. Anyway, just wanna get across the point that you can coin hunt for free. You just have to be smart about it, okay? If you are using any kind of money that you're going to need in the future, give yourself plenty of time. You never know what's gonna happen. Your car breaks down, but you need to go to the bank today because you gotta put that money back for the bill tomorrow. And uh oh, you showed over the bank and they're closed. You didn't know they're closed today, but you need it today. Don't get into that position. You know, ideally you'd be playing with money that you don't need for anything. But I just wanted to point out for anyone who is very tight financially, uh, if you're broke like I am, and uh, you still wanna do this, you can do it as long as you have the time to do it comfortably. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't play with fire, obviously. So ideally you'd just be playing with money that's just extra savings. And uh, you know, it's a really good idea to put some money aside. If you wanna consistently coin hunt, uh, set like wh whatever your limit is. If you have a $50 limit, that's cool. If you have a $20 limit, that's fine. If you have a $1,000 limit, whatever you can afford to not you know, use and put aside as savings, uh, just leave it in an account and just play with that money. You want to, you know, you go to a bank and they have $155 worth of halves you want to look through, you get it. And then when next time you go to the bank, you drop it off and, you know, you put that money right back in the account and you have a consistent, you know, constant rolling of the same amount of money. You're getting coins, you're looking through them, you're plucking out what you want, you're putting the money back. And the money you put back, you use in the future for more coin hunting. That can repeat itself for years and years and years with the exact same money. All right, that's the whole point, so. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.